Imagine you make a prediction for a discovery that wins the Nobel Prize. Your prediction turns out to be correct, and no one cares. This is what happened to these two physicists. I'm talking about a prediction from 2009, when Mikhail Shaposhnikov and Christoph Wetterich calculated the mass of the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson is one of the 25 elementary particles that physicists collect in the standard model of particle physics. It was the last of those particles to be discovered in 2012 at the Large Hadron Collider. In 2013, a Nobel Prize was awarded for its discovery. While most physicists were quite confident that the Higgs exists, they didn't know what the mass would be. Or most of them didn't know anyway. They did have some clues though. First, they had looked for the Higgs boson already with the Tevatron Collider at Fermilab in the United States. This collider reached a lower energy than the LHC and didn't see the Higgs boson. This allowed physicists to put a lower bound on the mass of the Higgs which was around 115 GeV. GeV stands for Giga Electron Volt and is a common unit of energy in particle physics. Yes, it's actually a unit of energy, not mass, because E equals mc square, and so it's kind of the same, really. To make sense of this unit, it's helpful to know that the mass of a proton is about 1 GeV, and 115 GeV is about the mass of a medium-sized atom. In everyday terms, those are really, really tiny amounts of mass. So particle physicists knew that the mass of the Higgs boson needs to be higher than 115 GeV, otherwise Fermilab would already have seen it. They also knew that something had to happen at about 1000 GeV at the latest, because if one just uses the standard model without the Higgs, that stops working at some point. The maths then spits out probabilities that are larger than 1, which really shouldn't happen. That the standard model stops working at around 1000 GV is why the LHC was such a good investment. Physicists knew that something new had to happen there. If it hadn't been the Higgs, something else would have had to show up. Or otherwise, we might indeed have seen probabilities larger than one, which would also have been interesting, I guess. They had yet another upper bound that was at about 180 GV. It's called the triviality bound. The argument is that if the mass of the Higgs boson was any larger than this bound, then the theory for the Higgs either breaks down or it can't create the masses for the other particles. So we have 115 from below and 180 GeV from above and a lot of ifs and buts because these bounds depend on the type of theory you assume the Higgs to obey and so on. But other than that, they didn't know what the mass was. Now, these two physicists came and said, whatever the mass of the Higgs boson is, it must still allow for gravity to become a quantum theory. You see, all the other fundamental forces of nature have quantum properties. But gravity is the odd one out by being entirely non-quantum. If you've ever been the only quantum theory at a party, you'll know how awkward this is. Most physicists therefore believe that gravity should also have quantum properties. It's just that we haven't yet found the right theory. This missing theory in which gravity has quantum properties is called quantum gravity. They think it must exist not just because it would be awkward if gravity was different, but more importantly, because without a theory of quantum gravity, there are some situations in nature for which we just don't know what happened, such as the Big Bang or inside black holes. We need this theory of quantum gravity to figure out what goes on there, and we'd all like to know, don't we? Or is it just me who wants to know what's inside of black holes? Physicists have tried to turn gravity into quantum gravity the same way they turned electrodynamics into quantum electrodynamics. This was done by Richard Feynman and Bryce DeWitt already in the 1960s. Unfortunately, it didn't work. When they used the known techniques for gravity, that resulted in a theory that when extrapolated to high energies, gave them an infinite number of infinities. The so obtained quantization of gravity was thought to be incurably sick and was abandoned. But, plot twist, in 1978, Steven Weinberg says that might have been a little too fast. In case the name doesn't ring a bell, Steven Weinberg won the Nobel Prize just a year later in 1979. His argument about quantum gravity was quite simple, really. 
He said that this approximation to higher energies is just mm. wrong. A more sophisticated method has to be used for the extrapolation, and then there are no infinities. If one does the calculation correctly, gravity is safely quantum. The idea became known as asymptotically safe gravity. The reason you've probably never heard of it before is that everyone, including Weinberg himself, thought it was a disappointing solution. Because you see, physicists hope that solving this big problem of quantum gravity would require something new. Strings or atoms of space or panpsychism or something, anything exciting. But saying that it's just a difficult extrapolation, that's really lame, isn't it? And so after Weinberg published his paper in 1978, no one thought much about it until the early 1990s when Christoph Wetterich and Martin Reuter worked out most of the mathematics. And this brings me back to the mass of the Higgs boson. Because the mass of the Higgs boson changes how this extrapolation to higher energy in quantum gravity works. And if you use the mathematics that had been developed by Wetterich and Reuter, it turns out that if the mass of the Higgs is either too large or too small, then gravity is no longer safe and the theory breaks down again. So these two guys I mentioned at the beginning, Shaposhnikov and Wetterich, went and calculated this window where quantum gravity works properly and came up with 126 GV plus minus 2.2. The measured value of the mass of the Higgs boson is 125.35 plus minus 0.15 GV. Their prediction was spot on. Now you could say that it wasn't a terribly precise prediction, what with this plus minus 2 point something, but I think one shouldn't blame them too much. Because this is a really difficult calculation which depends on the values of the masses of all the other particles and each of them has its own uncertainty. If one were to redo this calculation today, I suspect the uncertainty would be smaller. So they correctly predicted the mass of the Higgs boson, and no one cared. But what does this all mean? It means that quantum gravity just might not be that big mysterious problem that physicists made it out to be. It really might just be a matter of doing an extrapolation correctly. And that is so boring a solution that most physicists would rather ignore it. I'm sure you love science as much as I do, but what science really wants is that you understand it. And there's no better place to do that than Brilliant.org. On Brilliant, you find courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. I even have my own course there. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. All their courses are interactive with visualizations and follow-up questions. Brilliant really makes learning easy, fun and also convenient because you can do it whenever and wherever you like. And you can now try it out for free for 30 days by using our link brilliant.org slash Sabine. The first 200 of you to use the link will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give science some understanding. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.